The golden era of bodybuilding has to be the most beloved and iconic in the history of the sport. Due to the aesthetic physiques they developed, and if we look at each era in bodybuilding, we find certain trends in the way the physiques looked. Bronze era lifters were muscular, ripped and athletic, and had large shoulders and arms and well-developed abdominals, and in comparison, relatively poor chest development. Silver era bodybuilders were known for their massive rib cages and yet had a smoother look than bronze era athletes, whilst golden era bodybuilders had this unique look with massive chests and arms, great back development, but are often criticized for having relatively small deltoids, especially when you compare them to the bodybuilders of today. Just look at these photos of Arnold in his prime with his ginormous barrel-like chest and bread loaves for arms and tiny waist, but if we look at his deltoids, they were relatively small in comparison. Another example is Bill Pearl, who also possessed a massive upper body, but relatively small deltoids. Many have often asked why is it that golden era bodybuilders had small deltoids? So in this video interview I asked Ken Waller if golden era bodybuilders purposefully did not train deltoids to achieve this golden era look. Enjoy. Um, I know that um, you're, on a, you're on a very important point here that back then uh, I think bodybuilders looked at those things and sought to not overdevelop certain parts of their bodies, like, as you mentioned, the legs. Um, was that similar with you, especially, I mean, you already said that you didn't want to overdevelop your legs, but would you say that that was the same with your traps or with your deltoids? Because I've noticed that many bodybuilders from the golden era, this is a question actually from a fan as well, um, that many bodybuilders back in the day seem to have not as highly developed deltoids as nowadays. It's well, nowadays, when you look at the deltoids and all this stuff, now, I would, I really don't know about, about what people are taking or what they're doing, but I just know there's no way in hell you're going to look like that if you're not really taking whatever. Hmm. Uh, I mean, it's just crazy. Uh, uh, almost like a skin buffalo, big skin buffalo or something. I don't know. So, so you think it's got uh, to do with the stuff that they're taking that makes their deltoids and traps look so big? I think it, that's got a lot to do with the stuff because yeah. Well, how would you get like how how would you get like that with without uh, help? I mean, yeah. Now yeah. You, I, you know, like uh, the fullback on my high school football team. Now, he was a 205-pound uh, black guy who, won, like I said, won the 100-yard dash champion back then. And he was, uh, well, he would look like, I'd say, say he'd been lifting weights for two or three years straight. That's about what he looked like and never touched a weight. Yeah. Uh, and I, you know, and, and I look at these guys and... They have to have some kind of natural structure to start. I don't think you you can start with with uh, um, you know if you look at everybody that you, if you can see all the early pictures of them, they all have the basics somewhere along there. Mm. Otherwise, they wouldn't look like that. I mean, uh, I remember if you look, remember uh, now Bill Grant, for instance, he never could get his. Uh, calves to get uh, to get uh, you know up to his upper body, mm -hmm. and I think that's what held him back a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but I guess the, but, the the question I had was, and it's a similar question to the a fan is, um, would you say that back then there was a, a trend to actually not have the deltoids overdeveloped, or was that not true that you guys just still blasted your your delts and your shoulders as hard as you could? but they just simply didn't grow as much because the product that was used back then, firstly, the amount was smaller than what it is now and, and obviously vastly different. Which was it? Was it a trend? No, or? no I, I don't think the trend was any different. I think we train hard because I don't think the guys right now train as hard as we did. Yeah, that's true. I, I really don't. Uh, I, I think they do less. 
you get more results. Mm. And, you know, we, as, as far as deltoids, now we, I, we did 20 sets for, at least for deltoids every time we, uh, you know, for a shoulder exercise. And we'd do at least, you know, at least four different exercises. According to Ken Waller, Golden Era bodybuilders trained deltoids hard, and they trained deltoids as hard as any other body part. But because Golden Era bodybuilders did not use the amount of gear that is used nowadays, they did not develop the mass that modern era bodybuilders are capable of, especially with huge deltoids and traps. According to Ken, the freaky look in bodybuilding today especially with the mass monsters, has a lot to do with the amount and type of products they are using. I have to agree somewhat with Ken Waller, as science corroborates what he is saying, in that androgenic receptors in males are concentrated in the upper shoulder and trap areas. Therefore, it would make sense that the more anabolics a bodybuilder would use, the greater the anabolic effect, especially where there are more receptors concentrated to initiate hypertrophy. Also, one has to consider that the number and choice of different products has increased dramatically since the 1970s. Ken also states that genetics have to obviously do with muscle size and how your physique develops. And this statement is obviously true and doesn't need any further discussion. Having said that, however, I do not believe that our genetics have changed that much over the last 50 years which then leads one to conclude that if bodybuilders nowadays are required to walk on stage at 300 pounds of ripped muscle, the only way they are going to achieve that is by using much more gear than ever before, which explains why they look the way they do. And those with especially good genetics and greater androgen receptor numbers in the upper body area are obviously going to develop monstrous traps and shoulders. Having said that, Ken states that there was no trend to not overstimulate hypertrophy in the deltoid trap area. On the subject of genetics and the effect of steroids, we only have to look at the 1940s and 1950s where steroid use was questionable at best to see that silver era bodybuilders had all sorts of different shapes. And although some bodybuilders did appear to have small deltoids, it was mainly their genetics that determined the way they looked and their physique. Steve Reeves is a perfect example of a bodybuilder that possessed a wide structure, which gave him the illusion of having larger delts, whilst Reg Park had a more massive chest and arm development, which gave him the illusion of having smaller delts, similar to the bodybuilders from the Golden Era, yet he held records in the overhead press. So did Golden Era bodybuilders truly have small deltoids? I don't think so, and if anything, the way some of their physiques looked and developed gave the illusion of small deltoids. And yeah, I mean, we're talking here about Arnold and Bill Pearl and others that would fit into this category. But not all bodybuilders from the golden era had the illusion of small deltoids, as is exemplified by the greats such as Frank Zane, Don Howarth, Jim Hayslop, and Steve Davis, just to name a few. So I do hope you have enjoyed this video, and if you have, please give the video a like, subscribe, and please leave me your comments. In the next video, we look at Ken Waller's steroid cycle, so stay tuned. That's it from me, this is the Golden Era Bookworm saying, bye for now. Head to www.goldenerabookworm.com for the biggest range of classic old school bodybuilding books as ebooks, e-magazines, such as Iron Man and Reg Park Journal, high quality bodybuilding posters of the Golden Era stars, merchandise, and classic gym wear featuring Steve Reeves, Marvin Eder, John Grimmick, Reg Park, and many other Golden Era stars. For those wishing to build a classic physique, lose fat and build muscle, online training is also available. Collectibles such as rare autographed photos from the Golden Era stars are also available, and to collaborate, please get in touch. As a natural bodybuilder, it is imperative to know your own testosterone levels as they are a reflection of the anabolic environment created by your diet and training. I would highly recommend using the male hormone test kit from Let's Get Checked and make sure you use my code GOLDEN30 for a 30% discount. Again, the advantage of checking yourself regularly is that you will know how well your body is anabolically primed to put on the much desired muscle you are working for. Not all of us have the time to go to a gym or the opportunity to have a coach to teach us one-on-one -on -one 
But with the Future Fitness app, it's like having a personal trainer in your living room. From February 11th onwards, you can try the Future Fitness app for only $19 for the first month. Think of what you can accomplish during that first month. So go on and hit my link at tryfuture.co slash GEB to get started. Now, if you're interested in learning more about Vince Deronda's approach to bodybuilding, his principles, and all these tips of wisdom that he has. But to be honest, these three books, I believe, which I call the classic physique bundle, are the best books that Vince ever came out with. And they, of course, are the Wild Physique, the Master Series, and the Pro Series. Have a look at it this way. The Wild Physique, I believe, is like the ABCs of Vince Deronda's principles to bodybuilding. He teaches you the exercises and his principles, but how do you put them together? Well, the Master Series is a 14 month program of using all of these principles, all of the diets that Vince came out with, all of the exercises. And of course, the Pro Series was a book that he came out with later on, specially targeted for uh, getting into competition. It's just these, these three books, as I call it, the classic physique bundle, uh, Vince's best work, and available, of course, at www.goldenerabookum.com.